Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Ward in here. Today we are going to cover visual components. When you're building any kind of UI, whether it's with Angular, React, it could be Android, it could be native iOS, you're going to create some kind of class or object that represents a UI element. And you're going to create a bunch of these tools that form the brick and mortar of that application you're building. You can't build a visual application without visual components. When you're not using a preset thing like material design, thing like bootstrap or foundation, or the components that are that come with iOS and Android, you're going to have to build those yourselves. And Pixie.js is one of the places where you're expected to do that because you're creating these rich experiences. But just because they're custom and artwork does not mean that they still don't follow the standard rules of components. To create a component, normally you create a class. And the reason for that is that it's one of the good ideas around object-oriented programming, and that's encapsulating state. Classes can encapsulate not just the state, but the behavior of how these things work. As you've seen, instantiating containers and adding them to containers and modifying how they get drawn with certain colors over multiple steps, setting basic properties around interactivity, X and Y, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of stuff to make a UI component. Most people building the game don't care about all that stuff. They just want to do the rules. Like, okay, we have bread slices, and when you click them, show them, showing tick for smarts every frame. All this other stuff around composing the GUI and the rules around showing it can be encapsulated away or abstracted away. Let's do that first. We'll create a duck class. We'll start with that. We'll say duck.js. And this is basic JavaScript, no need for ES6 or transpiler or anything. Let's go ahead and get our duck main parts and we'll throw the rest away. We'll come back to this. So now we have nothing but that, okay? Nothing's on the screen. We'll go in our duck and we'll copy this to copy paste from. And the old school way to create classes was like duck as a function. And then you would just say const duck equals new duck. And then all your stuff like here would be internal. The problem is this function doesn't extend anything. So then you'd have to say like duck prototype or proto, blah, blah. We're not doing that. We're going to use the syntax sugar that the web communities worked really hard for. And that's using class. So we'll say class duck extends. And again, this is controversial. If you look in React world, there are some people that don't like extending React component. If you use composition, it gives you a lot of flexibility for your functions, etc. However, if you do extend things in Pixie, you can immediately use that class and set the scale, set this X and Y, add it as a child, right? Treat it like a normal display object. So there's a lot of power in that. And we're going to leverage that power. So we're going to say leverage the power by extending Pixie Sprite. Our duck is now a display object. It has an X and Y property, just like everything else. Very similar to this, except this class is going to take all that code, that 120 lines of code, and, and move it down to about 40. So when you created the old school way, the function would run, and that was your constructor. Now we actually have a formalized constructor. This function is only one, run one time when you actually instantiate the class. And we're going to do one thing called super. This is our base class, which is this and pass it our texture. So we can leverage the fact that we have a base class. Pixie texture from image. So very similar to before. And that way, people who create the duck don't care about where this ping file is and setting up textures. They don't care about any of that. They just know they instantiate a duck, they get a duck. So instead of duck scale, we now have the concept of scope. This is the double-edged sword of using classes. So we try to abstract it away into a me variable. Me scale set 0 2. Instead of this, you just type in me. There's a variety of reasons for that. I have an oot video, two oot videos, two hours long. Knock yourself out is why I'm doing this. That's all great, but this is the last thing we have to do. When you create sprites, it's very, very common to create a UI element and immediately want to add it. So let's go ahead and add that functionality for users of this component and make it optional. Now, you don't have to put equals null, but you're just saying, look, dude, if you don't pass it, not a big deal. We can handle it. Kind of adds a vote of confidence to those using it that they can omit that property if they don't want to. Say, hey, if parent isn't there, great. But if it is there, we'll go ahead and use it. Add child me. Within one line of code, they can use the duck. But before we got to do that, we can import it. We're not using a module loader, so we have to do it the old school way and put the script tag first so it loads our duck class first. There we go. We've included an index.html. Now let's use it. We'll say duck equals new duck and pass in our app stage as our component, as our main page, main container. Capitalize it. Voila, there's our duck. It only requires one line of code. Pretty rad, huh? And this container is optional. So that is the baby steps in the creating components to kind of abstract away all the code that's required in Pixie.js or any really visual framework. To create it, all the power, choose what class you extend for optimization reasons or functionality reasons.